Hi, Gene here with today's thought, and today's thought is going to be about Israel and Hamas. It's now a full-scale war. Not much. Anything I could say really is going to be just old news by the time you're seeing this the day after I record it. That's how fast events are are going on. So I'm just going to give you my opinion of, well, it looks like Israel is going in for the kill finally. I think they've had enough. I think I said this in the last vlog. It looks like they're going to eliminate Hamas. And I, well, here's a, a quote, a tweet actually from Scott Adams, creator of Dilbert. And Israel is about to get larger. That's basically what I think is going to happen because I think they may, they realize they made a mistake leaving Gaza. You have to remember that Israel completely left Gaza in 2005. The Palestinian Authority was in charge at that time. In 2007, Hamas took over. Hamas took over, kicked um, the Palestinian Authority out. They've been there ever since, and we see what's been happening. And the Israelis, they, they always had the, they could have, they can conquer, retake Gaza anytime they want to. The problem is what the cost would be. To, to soldiers' lives. And also, well, now we're seeing all the rockets. Of course, if they would have gone in earlier before all these rockets were uh, were built, then they would have, and all the tunnels and, and so on and so forth, they would have had a much easier job of it. They should have realized their mistake a year, as soon as Hamas took over, they should have immediately realized their mistake and gone back in. This is the problem it's a problem I think of, uh, we have too, that we wait too late to deal with problems when they're easier, not easy, but easier to deal with. And we wait because we say it's going to be too, uh, the price would be too high. And then we end up having to deal with it later. And the price is much higher. That's, uh, I, I'm not going to dwell on it, the, the examples for our, for our own country, but Israel, definitely for them, they, uh, when one hostage was taken several years ago, they didn't do anything after they got that hostage back. Then three hostages were taken. Now, um, well, uh, two of them, four, two, two live uh, Israelis and then two dead bodies from soldiers that they're holding. But now, look at this. Uh, I th it's over 800 dead Israelis as I'm recording this, and it's probably, it's certainly going to be more by the time you're seeing this. And that's, that's what the price that they've paid for not acting earlier. So they finally got the message. It looks like they're going in. I have been reading Israeli papers, the English. Uh, you can read the, well, the Jerusalem Post, you really can't. So many people are, are trying to access the, uh, the Jerusalem Post that, well, sometimes you can get through, sometimes you can't. But there's another um, one, the Times of Israel, that I just follow the news over there. They're sending 300, 300, th Israel is, 300,000 soldiers to uh, the border of Gaza. They're going to go in and they're really going to finish the job. And I think this is what uh, Scott Adam means. I hope he's right that they go in, they're not going to leave. They, they realize it, it was a mistake to leave and they're going to be back. And when I say be back, I mean the Israeli civilians who were living there. There, there were settlements there, and the, the Israeli army took them out because they thought if they did it, they, they would get peace. The international international community was pressuring them to say, if you leave, then there can be, well, a two-state solution. That's, let's be honest, that's dead by now, but it's dead. But they, the idea was that they, if they left, the, the Palestinians in Gaza, the Arabs in Gaza would live in peace. We see now the exact opposite has happened. So they're probably going to go back and, and civilians and build, rebuild the settlements. They left, when they left, they left greenhouses behind that the, um, that the Palestinians could have used to create a, a, a thriving a horticultural industry. Not only that, but just in general, there I saw uh, some of the uh, photo uh, video of uh, 
the destruction of one part of Gaza, and right behind it, you can see the uh, uh, the Mediterranean uh, Sea, beautiful waters. They could be, uh, as somebody said, another Singapore. They could be a, a hot vacation spot. They could have casinos, tourists. They could have industry, so, so many things, but they decided that uh, instead it's a terrorist state. So they're going to be better off, ultimately. It's going to be just like when we fought... Um, Imperial Japan and <clears throat> Imperial Japan and Nazi Germany. It was uh, we wrought great destruction on those com- those countries at that time. But now, then we helped them rebuild afterwards. And look at those two countries today. They're both economic powerhouses and fully democratic. And that's what I'm sure would happen in Gaza um, if there if you get rid of Hamas, then the Israelis can make the area safe and investment would come in. So, uh, oh, and that's another bit of news, if you haven't heard about it. The European Union has stopped sending money to the Palestinians. To, so the repercussions just have yet to be seen. But oh, I'll throw in one, one more thought, which is that Iran is behind all this, obviously. They're financing this and they're financing it with oil sales. First of all, because the, our glorious and competent president uh, supported re- relaxing the sanctions on um, on Iran. So they were selling about like 500,000 barrels, I think, a, a day of oil, something like that. Now they're selling millions, I forget how many millions, but millions of barrels a day. And the price of oil is going up because uh, our glorious and competent president is deliberately restricting the supply of oil. So that's how they're financing the, the war. And what I don't understand is why the Israelis, maybe they'll get smart and do it. Um, it it's one thing uh, they debate. There's all this debate about whether about destroying uh, Iran's nuclear program and, and that uh, the nuclear facilities are hidden they're underground beneath a mountain yada 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 but the oil fields uh, on which uh that's really iran's only it's definitely their major industry they depend on it greatly and those oil fields and the refineries they're sitting right out there they're right above ground and i don't know why the israelis don't just destroy it just destroy all the oil fields and the, uh, the refineries and Iran, uh, their major source of income will be completely cut off and go ahead, re- relax all the sanctions you want on oil sales. If they, ha- if they can't get the oil out of the ground and they can't uh, get, get it onto ships, then uh, maybe sink some of those oil tankers too, the ones that, that are, are Iranian flagged. So, those are my thoughts uh, for today. Thanks for stopping by. If you could subscribe, that would really be great. Um, show the, or share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it. But most of all, come back and see me again. We'd love to see all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.